Hey everyone, this is Dimitri Pergamonic with MarketChameleon.com. In this video, I'm going to go over a simple example of how to read an option chain. Now we're right now on the Market Chameleon. The first thing we want to do is go to a stock symbol that we want to pull up an options chain. So I'm going to put in Apple over here. And now I'm on the Apple page and this is the summary page. So let's come down to option chain over here. Now that we have selected, let's just talk about really quickly what an options chain does. Now, every stock that has options, for example, here, Apple, will have probably many different types of options because you have call options, put options, you have different strikes and you have different expirations. Now, if you need to go in and find information on these different options, you're going to need a way to organize it so you could quickly find that information that you're looking for. And typically, you're going to see some, some similarities between the options chain of different form, different platforms. And let me just expand this here a little bit. In this example over here, we're, I'm looking at an Apple options chain. Now, one thing is you're probably going to have a way to select the expiration. And over here, we could see this is December 11th expiration. If I click over, I click on December 18th expiration. To the right, it's going to bring up the information for options that are expiring December 18th. And as you could see, as I go through it, and if I click on December 31st, it's going to repopulate the information for options that expire December 31st. Now, quickly, let's just move over to that uh, options chain here. And this is what you'll probably typically see uh, for an options chain almost everywhere you look is that on one side, you're going to have the call options. As we see over here, these are the call options to the left-hand side. And on the other side, you have the put options. And then usually right in the middle, you're going to have the option strike, which is the reference strike. So over here, as I'm hovering over here, this is the Apple 123 strike. So if I move to the left here, we see the call option bid and the call option offer. So right now it's bid $3. That's the market showing interest to buy that option for $3. And it's offered at $3.10, which is the market showing interest to sell that option for $3.10. And of course you could try to buy it or sell it on these markets or somewhere in between. Now we see here that the strike is 123. If we go over to the right hand side, this is the the put or the corresponding put on the same strike. So now we could compare what the call option price is to the put option price on the same strike, the 123 strike. So we see here that the 123 put that expires December 31st is $4.25 bid and it's offered at $4.30. So if you wanted to just sell it on the market prices, the 425 is the best current bid. 430 is the best current offer where you could buy or you could try to put in a limit order somewhere in between to try to get a better uh, execution. And as you scroll down, you could see that it's really easy th that the strikes are just organized in a way where each strike going down you're going down to the next strike 117 strike 116 115 and as you move up you're moving up to the higher strikes this way it's very simple to kind of go to the expiration that you want go to the strike that you want and find the call or the put and where the current markets are so those are things that are pretty standard for any option chain the other things that you might see is the volume over here, as I'm moving from the 123 strike down to the call, there's 1,256 contracts that traded today on the call. If you move over to the right-hand side, you see that on the 123 put that expires December 31st, there are currently 125 contracts that traded on the day. And those are really the most basic things that you'll see almost in all options chain. Now, here we're looking at a lot more different information and not every options chain is this is is the same you could create any types of analytics or any type of references that help you make a better decision so in for example here you'll see that if we go all the way over to the left hand 
column. Here we have a drop down where you could select Delta, open interest, Gamma, Vega, Theta, Rho, and as you could see, the implied volatility change or the market change in that option. And that's uh, some ways to help you kind of analyze some of the risk associated with that option. I'm not going to go into details in this video because each of these probably requires a video of, of its own but you could see that along with just the basic prices you're going to have other analytics on that options chain to help you make a better decision here we also see the implied volatility next to the option and the, that helps uh, helps us kind of evaluate the premium in that option how high or how low that premium is relative to potentially itself from a historical perspective or we could compare you know the options relative to each other um, and if you click on it you'll get time in sales so here on the volume if i click on it i'll be able to actually see what uh transpired or what trades occurred on that option so this would be like a time in sales where you could get a deeper look into what traded on 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 that day for this contract so this would be the total volume you click on it and you get to see uh each each trade how how uh that volume added up to 1256. so really quickly that's a quick overview of how to read an options chain um, from a very basic um, point of view. Thanks, everyone, and hope to see you in the next video.